Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as Dialog LM, Pre-trained Model for Long Document Understanding and Summarization. This is from researchers from University of Illinois and Microsoft Cognitive Research Group. So let's start off with the abstract. So they say, Dialog is an essential part of human communication and cooperation. Existing research mainly focuses on short dialogue scenarios in a one-to-one -one fashion. However, in the real world, you have like meetings going on or a group where multiple people speak at a time. There is a lack of research and multi-party setting. And also because many people are involved, the chances of a dialogue going very long or really high, which is a current limitation of existing research. So with this paper, they propose a pre-training framework for a long document, sorry, long dialogue understanding and also summarizing it. Okay, so if we talk about what is a pre-training strategy at the first place, so you might relate it to BERT or maybe T5 or maybe Pegasus or maybe BART. So let's talk about all these four models and see what their pre-training strategy was and how and what new is Dialogue I'm essentially proposing. So with BERT, that, so I'll just talk about the one which is mass language modeling, where if you have sequence of, let's say, tokens that make up a sentence. So the idea is if this is the input, you mask a couple of words over here, some percentage. And on output end, the model is expected to produce what was essentially masked. So a fill in the blanks kind of a pre-training strategy. So this was just one of them. You also had a sequence prediction strategy, but yeah, we'll stick to MLM for now. With T5, the idea was to, to train and encode a decoder architecture and impose a pre-training strategy over there. So what they did was, if this is an input sequence, you would mask a couple of words over here. Let's say these two is what you mask. And on output end, you would want to produce these two words. So this is done at decoder. This is what encoder encodes, which is a noisy version of the input. Whereas word was just encoder. So if this is what goes to encoder, encoder will essentially output what the fill in the blanks would be. With T5, you also had a couple of more nuances like giving task specific prefix, which was used eventually in the fine tuning stage. With Pegasus, again, the idea was if you have let's say these are five sentences and not five words, then I can mask out the entire sentence. And at the output, I would want to produce what that sentence was that was masked based on all the three and this fourth sentence that occurred to its vicinity. Bart proposed again a couple of more techniques, which was adding noise in actual sentence, dropping certain words, swapping word orderings, masking the entire sentence, then producing what the original sentence could have been. So I think you get a better hang of what the pre-training strategy looks like. Now with dialogue LM, if you see, there is a pattern to how a dialogue occurs or a conversation occurs. You have speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, and there's a concept of turn that is getting involved because to what has been asked for or what has been discussed at tth time, somebody will be replying or asserting or addressing that in T plus one time and the order of the flow of time goes from top to bottom. So this sequence has to be considered while proposing a pre-training strategy and all these strategies what we looked across all these four models don't really address that. They were more or less confined to a sentence level noise injection. So yeah, this is something new that they're proposing and is benefiting if you're working with dialogue understanding or summarization. They also talk about adding the word long because as you saw right these conversations can go for hours and hours so the transcript that you can expect is like six thousand words five thousand words long so how do you got to scale your transform model to understand such big sequences because most of these models start consuming a lot of memory or might not even support sequence of this length so to which they address and propose a window-based sparse attention mechanism that is combined with conventional attention in a hybrid manner. So full attention plus sparse attention is what they propose. So let's move on to the paper and see all of it in detail. So in this figure they show how the input gets transformed after the masking or the noise is injected and what we are supposed to be predicting on the output end. So what they say they are doing something called as window based denoising. So this is the text, original text that you have where you have Tom saying something, then Sam addressing to it, and maybe Amy after that, and then again Tom. Here, if we select this turn that involves Sam and Amy, which makes up our window of two turns, let's say. 
we add noise to this window by changing the order of it where Amy comes first and then Sam. We also mask the speaker information and also some of the words that the speaker said. So three kind of noises what we just saw, right? One is swapping, one is speaker masking and other is word level masking. So all of this then goes to the encoder where you get a thought representation, one vector representation that encodes all of this. And now the task of decoder is to output the actual text that should have been there at the place of this noisy text. So yeah, this is a glimpse of what we see is the kind of denoising that the authors are trying to introduce. Let's move on to see if there's any more denoising strategies that they use. Okay. So yeah, this table lists out, I believe, all of the noise types that they propose. So the first one is speaker masking, where if this is the original dialogue, you would kind of put a mask token against who has spoken the sentence. And that is what the decoder's task is to kind of predict the name of the person. Then you have turn splitting, where if a person said multiple things and it's go, you can split each of them by sentence level and have a mask token arranged for each of these sentences against the speaker against the speaker identity so here again if the model is able to say it was speaking by tom then the context accumulation is what the model is essentially learning which is basically all these three things were said by the same person then you have turn merging which is opposite of turn splitting where if let's say tom speaks these two sentences bob speaks these two sentences you merge all of them and put it as tom and now at the decoder end model should be able to say, okay, these two were spoken by Bob, whereas these two were spoken by Tom. Then you have text infilling, which is same as mask language modeling. You randomly select a couple of words, put a mask token, and that is what model has to find out. And finally, you have turn permutation, where you jumble up the order in which the conversation has happened within a certain window, and the model on this jumbled output is expected to reproduce the original order in which they should have had occurred. So yeah, these were the window-based denoising functions that the authors propose and uh, when seen in practice, they tend to outperform typical pre-training strategies when working with dialogue systems. Because if you see, right, these are all dialogue-inspired noise. There is a pattern in which dialogue happens. So if we try to incorporate the similar stuff during the pre-training stage, that's definitely going to help out the further fine-tuning of such models. So if you remember, similar was the case with Pegasus because Pegasus is a model that is that is there for you to do summarization, right? So it essentially masked out entire sentence and because the sentence is more or less a holistic unit when you talk about summarization. So if you are able to reproduce that, more or less you are able to understand nearby sentences and get on to recreating a sentence that was masked. So that knowledge of recreating the entire sentence is a much more harder task, but much more relevant when it comes to summarization compared to if you just do, let's say, word level masking or some random token masking or phrase level masking. So I have a video on Pegasus, Bart, T5, all of this on this channel. I link all of them in the I button and as well as in the description. Make sure to check them out for more details. Okay, moving forward. So they chose transformers as the backbone for doing all this computation. So as you know, right, dialogues are like really long piece of text. So current limitations of the model like BART and UniLM is that they're not pre-trained on dialogue format. So the structure of how the dialogue comes, there's no pre-training strategy that caters to that. So this is something that the authors of this paper introduced. And the second thing is well, the existing models such as BART can handle at most 1024 tokens, whereas UniLM can just handle 512 tokens. So this is again the second thing that they introduce where they implement an hybrid approach of attention that caters to full self-attention, which is again a typical way of doing attention, which is computationally intensive because it accounts for quadratic computation. Because for every block over here, it attends to itself from the previous layer and also all the other blocks that are present in the previous layer. So that way a lot of computation happens and it is dependent on the sequence length. So the higher the sequence length, higher these attention values you'll have to calculate and higher the time complexity it would be. 
So what this is, in your entire architecture of transformer encoder, for let's say if you have L transformers layer, for some of the layers we'll do full attention, which is let's say 4, 8th and 12th. For all the other layers, we're just doing sparse attention. They implement something specifically, which is called as sparse skin horn attention, which is a part of this paper. So I haven't really gone through in detail to what this attention strategy is, but by going through the text that's written over here and the diagram, I can come up with some conclusion but feel free to go and do your research on this paper. I'll link this in the description box. So it looks like, for example, if this was the query, so if you were to attend to just, let's say, yourself originally, and we not, which is a way of doing a local attention where the block size is just one. So we're just attending to yourself from the previous layer. So now what we can do is we can sort these blocks and using some network that learns how to sort it in an efficient way. And now this green can also attend to blue, this blue can attend to green, this red can attend to blue. So that way you are attending to the blocks that were not in your vicinity, but maybe farther somewhere else. So this is giving that sneak peek attention level thing and adding its value. So with the combination of such kind of attention along with full attention for some of the layers, they were able to achieve remarkable performance when scaling to even 5,000 to 8,000 kind of tokens. So yeah, that's pretty impressive. So moving on to the results for the task of meeting summarization and abstractive question answering for data set of AMI, ICSI, and QM sum. Dialog LM, sparse, and dialog LM are, are on top of the leaderboard. That clearly shows the impact of pre-training strategy and the hybrid iteration mechanism. So cool, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with your friends. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.